unapologetically joy my name is joy i'm the host of this podcast and today we got another special guest and that is tanya Pekur. and she is a buddhist practitioner a marketeer an activist and a mother so welcome tanya thank you <laughs> uh thank you for so for so nice introduction uh yes everything true uh, mm-hmm. and uh, i'm really happy to be here today i'm a little bit uh, embarrassing about my english but i hope that you understand me well yes and <laughs> please ask me questions no it really doesn't matter it's all about your story and um i was reading your story and like i said before i got even uh, a little bit emotional about it because uh, you have an incredible story And uh, I met you before and you're such a bright and positive person. So you will never think that this is your story. And um, yeah, it's so easy to go into the victim uh, mode and you really took uh, responsibility of your life. And that says a lot about you. And um, I would like to begin as Tanya as a kid uh, because you grow up in Ukraine. Uh, yes, it's true. Uh, I grew up in a small town, yeah, and in a normal family. I had a, a, a sister, and uh, yes, it was the time when um, actually I I was born with the feeling that a person have to learn how to be happy that our goal is to be happy but sometimes we don't know how to do this and we need to learn and uh, uh, since i was a small kid i was sure that everybody thinks like this mm-hmm. and uh, happiness for me is also about freedom that mm-hmm. the most important things is to feel free and to give uh freedom to other people because if mm-hmm. only i am happy and free but all everybody around me are not so it's impossible to continue mm-hmm. so it's very important to be happy and free inside myself and to do the same for other people that they feel the same mm-hmm. but i didn't see my uh, um, the same thinking people around me And it was a problem. And I asked my parents, where is this happiness? What to do? Where is uh, freedom? But they told me, "Mm, no, no, Tanya, forget. You need to suffer all your life. And maybe you will have some children or a husband. And then you will die. And all life is suffering. And I asked, why? Oh, my God, it's terrible. Uh, For what? And they told me, "Mm, government is guilty for this. (laughs) And I, when I was a small was a small kid, I thought, okay, I will be grown up and I will change it. Mm-hmm. So this is a kind of story. Mm-hmm. Yes, connected with this. Also, I had a, a strong feeling from uh, uh, from my early early childhood that that um, my I am not my body, and it was a story. When I when I went uh, from the school, it was like first year of the school, and they had a feeling. So if I die now, so where will be my mind? And actually, where is my mind now in my body when I'm walking like near this uh, shop? Or for example, it is near the house in the kitchen because I was thinking about food, and like thinking like this when I was like seven years old, I like really. It was really clear for me that I am not my body. But then another question was, but who I am? Mm -hmm. And uh, I was also like sure that everybody thinks like this, but it was also my mistake. And the third thing which I thought about myself is that all things is not so clear and they are not so tough as we think about them. And uh, why I decided like this? I think I was like six or even five years old. We were playing in the yard with my friend. And uh, her father was uh, this guy who takes care about uh, bees. These bees houses. Mm. 
yeah, yeah. and he was moving uh, uh, like near these bees houses and they were uh, running all around him and we were small kids and we were afraid of these bees because they can bite you and it was really hurt i knew i knew this mm -hmm. and i asked him why don't you afraid them they can bite you and he told me but they don't see me wow i was so like impressed of this i thought okay but if bees don't see human beings so maybe you human beings don't see see something or they maybe see something in incorrect way maybe we see this house like house only because we have these eyes mm -hmm. but if somebody changed our eyes we will see it in a different way Mm -hmm. So for me, it was like chuk, inside, and I understood that everything is not so like I see, mm -hmm. and maybe we will we will we will have some another animals or another beings which are bigger or from the other world, mm -hmm. and uh, we don't see them, but they are, and mm -hmm. uh, actually all this was Buddhist mind and Buddhist mm -hmm. ideas, yeah, and mm -hmm. when I came to them. It was like, oh my God, I find at least what I was looking for so many years. Mm -hmm. And it was like relaxing. I am at home at, at least. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you also believe in a reincarnation? Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. It's like um, uh, everything is a wave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now we have scientific uh, improvement that everything is a wave, but the distance of this wave and different other qualities of this wave uh, makes everything different. Something is soft, something is hard, something, something is somewhere existing, but we can't touch it and so on. Mm -hmm. And uh, we... Uh, uh, everything connected with mind we call it mind but it's not about thinking mm -hmm. mind is about some quality yeah which can keep everything inside and everything going on in this space yeah in this mind and mm -hmm. human being or a person is also a part of this mind and mm -hmm. now i'm here in this body because of some previous condition from the past mm -hmm. uh, but what i do now makes my future mm -hmm. and this is it so this mm -hmm. is like the total responsibility for what mm -hmm. i am and what i'm doing and what i choose to do yeah. i i can't say okay this is uh, government guilty i can't say god make this for me makes this for me that's why i am doing like this no i have that like 100 responsibility for mm -hmm. for everything what body i have from mm -hmm. because i have it from previous lives what mm -hmm. life condition i have because i have them from previous actions yeah what um i don't know what lovers i have what mm -hmm. kids i have everything this is what i choose before yeah. And now I can choose what will be in the future. And it gives me so much freedom that uh, like all uh, difficult task in my life is just interesting. I mean that it's not a problem. It's just interesting task. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It just, okay, what we have now? Hmm, interesting. Let's, let's see how I will manage with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the truth is also really important for you and you're fighting for your freedom, like you said. Um, how was that period for you when you were an activist? Because you were telling me you were fighting against the government. Uh, how was that uh, period for you? Yes, yes. It was all about my Buddhist mind before. <laughs> <laughs> because as I mentioned, my parents told me that we are so unhappy because government is bad. And I say, say, okay, no problem. I will come and change. What's the problem? And when I was a student, I met uh, the same people around me. 
and we organized a non-government organization and uh, first it was like uh, uh, we were talking about some truth things about history because i was from historical department in the university mm-hmm. uh, we were talking about history we were talking about rights human rights and so on but slowly slowly in that very moment president election started and it was like two candidates and one is is was from democracy part yeah it was like more european value standards he was uh, more for freedom for ukraine and the other one was like more uh, russian candidate yeah and he was mm-hmm. like from this old soviet system uh, and uh, he was like um, opposite he um, no any values like freedom every everything everything should like be under control and we were like we we understood that if we did nothing we just lost our freedom personally and not only personally and we start making uh, like uh, not on it was not only me it was not like meetings it was like uh, some talkings we made some uh, funny funny performances in the street uh, showing the truth Mm-hmm. And uh, the reaction was terrible because uh, they arrested the students. They came to the university for police, came to the university and uh, they uh, um, uh, like scared people. Uh, they said that uh, you lost your uh, uh, opportunity to have a higher education. Uh, we fired your parents and everything it was like this but when we we didn't stop then they started Mm -hmm. to uh, be more cruel even and uh, they one day they made um, how to say when they come and just try to catch everybody in the hostel student hostel yeah i escaped i escaped uh, to the apartment and i was (laughs) cooking i was cooking my dinner in the kitchen and my friends were in the other uh, room when somebody knocked in our door and the guy opened the door and the police came inside and they start like um, they start i don't know how to say this in english when they uh, catch everybody and start uh, looking for something and so on Mm -hmm. yeah yeah. For, fortunately i was really lucky because i had my mobile telephone near me and i made a call to uh, to say that please help yeah you and, cannot uh, call the police in this time yeah because police wasn't yeah. already <laughs> inside <laughs> it was so funny yeah but i called the the lawyer and uh, that's why they knew that we what was going on and they came very quickly yeah, because if mm-hmm. not, they just catch everybody and just uh, put into the prison. But f- mm-hmm. fortunately, they came in time. And mm-hmm. uh, but before they came, police found uh, uh, five hundred TNT, five hundred grams of TNT in my oven. Oh my like, god! Actually, yeah. actually, I have never seen this TNT before. And if I knew that so huge amount of this tnt was in my oven i would never cook dinner on this because of course not because because it's enough to for explosion the whole uh, um area like the whole like um like 10 big uh, buildings could be destroyed of this amount it was really dangerous (laughs) i don't know how it can be but they put it before into our apartment because they want they wanted to say that we are terrorists oh my god yes and that's why it's like russian style really i say i say this directly because this is the message unfortunately yeah Okay, so they let go everybody because lawyers came, but they took only one man. He was my boyfriend. And they put them into the prison because of terrorism. (gasps) Yeah, and we made lots of meetings uh, and protests against this uh, decision because it was not honest. There was no any proof that we put this TNT into the oven. But 
we were lucky as well because election started and as we just uh, made these um, meetings and uh, protest protests before so the orange revolution started in ukraine in mm -hmm. general and uh, they and uh, they didn't uh, make any other terrible things which was after many years yeah and the uh, elections uh, was really honest mm -hmm. and uh, the democracy candidate won oh, but wow. for me yes but for me it was not for some candidate or for some i don't know person yeah for me it was my fight for freedom yeah yeah and uh, it was it was actually a good story and after i was like i was uh, an activist like five years i think and we made advocacy campaign connected with protecting animals protecting uh people who live near some military objects we were fighting for the rights in my country and it was a really cool time. Mm -hmm. But when we were working on this, we slowly, slowly moved to um, politics career. Mm -hmm. And uh, I asked myself, am I really happy with this? Am I really want to be a politics? Mm -hmm. And uh, the very deep inside, I, I felt that no. Because I went to this um, part because I want to find happiness. But I saw that politicians are not happy as well. They had mm -hmm. power, they had money, but they are not happy. And even mm -hmm. uh, activists, my friends, uh, we were working together, they are also unhappy. They mm -hmm. don't know what to do with their life. Of course, yes, of course, they are fighting for some good uh, uh, things, but uh, they don't know what to do today to mm -hmm. be more joyful mm -hmm. and free, free inside. Mm -hmm. And that's why I uh, decided to go out of the organization and I change city and I start to work with businesses uh, as market marketing specialist and so on, so on. Mm -hmm. It was like so strong decision in my life yeah. but i didn't met uh, buddhism at that time it was just my way to find uh, happiness but not not still <laughs> okay and when did you first become interested in uh, buddhism okay actually it was like really hard situation in my life um um when I start working with businesses, everything was more or less fine. But then uh, uh, I, um, it was like everything together. Yeah, all all uh, difficult things uh, were together, and uh, I uh, I met a man, and uh, I fell in love a lot. But when I got pregnant, he didn't want to take responsibility for this. And uh, when my son was seven year or seven months, he just disappeared. Wow! And, uh, and that very moment, my mother was ill. Uh, she had cancer, and uh, actually, I was living in the house of my parents with a small kid, and my mother was dying. And uh, I was, I, I, I had the, like my heart was broken. I lost all my. Um, hopes for family for being loved mm. for normal uh, woman uh, life yeah mm. and also my family didn't accept this because they have this uh, pat patriarchy patriarchy i don't know how to say it correctly mind mm. yeah when when they yeah uh, traditional traditional yeah, like traditional. a man and a woman a family yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 and they and they thought that I was guilty that I uh, that I am alone and that uh, I am ashamed of the family, yeah. and it was like so huge um, um, suffering in me. Yeah, and I was walking one day in the park, and I was ah, and of course I lost my job. <laughs> yeah. Also, also I had no money for living. And Ukraine is not that country which takes care about uh, women who's 
who stays uh, with the kid. Yeah, they okay. they give money, but so small amount of money that you can't survive for them. Yeah, and that, that's why I had to live with my parents, which hated me because uh, I was like uh, a shame for the family, and also my mother was dying, and I had to. To, re to perceive this, yeah, like, oh my God, one of the most important person of my life just lo just uh, disappeared. It was my ex-husband, uh, mm -hmm. yeah? yeah, and my mother is dying. I also mm -hmm. uh, lost her very soon. Okay, I was walking in the park and I was thought, thinking, uh, I, I was sure all my life that I have to be happy. How it's possible that now I'm suffering so much? I, it can't be true. And mm -hmm. I thought, where is the mistake? And then mm -hmm. I thought, maybe the mistake is my way of perception of the situation, but not the situation at all. And I start to find, to look for something good in the situation and i thought okay at least one thing is really good my mother is dying and i gave her opportunity to uh to take care about a nep uh, nephew mm -hmm. grand yeah. uh, grandson yeah. grandson grandson yeah. yes grandson yeah. not nephew yeah grandson yeah and and they say this is can be a joy uh, situation as well joyful mm -hmm. <laughs> joy is you joy <laughs> yeah. yeah it's very very beautiful name you have thank you <laughs> uh, yes and then after that i start to looking for something i was reading and um, i was reading stephen covey books mm -hmm. yes and i liked his philosophy very much then i start to looking for something else um, of course, I found a job. I was uh, working during night or when my son was sleeping. <laughs> it was really interesting time because I had so uh, so strong feeling inside that I have to take care about him and I have to do everything I can uh, that he was happy as well. Yeah, and that's why I I didn't let me go down. Yeah, I didn't let to have depression. Because I have this idea that I need to take care about this kid. So that's why I went through m my mother's death also, like, quite quickly. Yeah? I think the one of the most big, biggest, biggest problem in uh, modern society that we focus on ourselves so much. I am, I am, my needs, my am, and so much. But when we just... A little bit change our focus on others, then everything start to be not so tough. Mm -hmm. And uh, joy and enjoying appears a little bit one by one, yeah. Mm -hmm. But to be joyful is also a habit, <laughs> mm -hmm. and we need to grow it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I was I I I tried to find some yoga classes, but it was not for me. I had no connection. Some uh, experience like uh, with uh, some drugs uh, and so on, but I also felt that it was not for me. I tried to find something spiritual. And actually, I find this special breathing. Yeah, uh, when, you, when you breathe in a special way, then you get the uh, state like after lsd mm -hmm. yeah you get a little bit high yeah yeah not a little bit then your conscious just down and unconscious goes out mm -hmm. and uh, when i was in this trip yeah, joy disappeared <laughs> when mm -hmm. i was in this trip i uh, saw some um mountains and I saw some letters on the stones and I tried to read these letters, but I couldn't because I didn't know what in this. And after this day, like in three days, I found an exhibition 
connected with Tibetan Buddhism. And I decided to go to this exhibition. And when I attended it, I found these letters inside. So letters which I saw in my trip was exactly that letters which I saw during this Buddhist exhibition. Hmm. And I decided that it was some sign from previous lives. Maybe I was already in Tibet. And uh, I felt really deep connection with Buddhism. It was the first time when I met Buddhism in my life. Hmm. And I asked uh, friends, uh, where is this center? And just came. And when I came to the Buddhist center, I told you already that I felt like, okay, I'm at home. Because, because it was people who were talking about uh, things which I only felt, but I could never talk with some of my friends or relatives. Yeah, it was about um, impermanence, that nothing can can be all time, everything changes, and only our perception shows, uh, our, our perceptions make feelings about this, yeah? But facts are just facts. Mm -hmm. we, we try to appreciate something, we try to catch what we like, we try, we try to escape from what we don't like, yeah? But actually it's only facts. Yeah. Yeah, they were speaking about reasons, yeah, that we make, uh, today we make our future and we have like 100 responsibility for, 100% of responsibility for our life. And they like this as well. And mm -hmm. also they, uh, I met my Lama and uh, when I saw him, I, it was, um, it was the first example of total happiness which I was looking for so many years, yeah. He was so simple, so open, and uh, like handsome, sexy as well, you know. <laughs> and I thought, wow, I, I don't know what is it Buddhism, but I really want to be like him. And it was like a live inspiration, and I started. And of course, I had lots of uh, inside, uh, very deep uh, feelings about meditation. But unfortunately, I can't share it <laughs> here because this is uh, too... Too deep, secret. Too personal, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you found out about Buddhism and you said that you found the truth. But I also think a lot of people are afraid of the truth. So I think that's why... A lot of people don't really go that deep as you did. Yeah, it's true. Um, the idea is when you really look at the truth, then you can see that I am not so ideal. Mm -hmm. That then I thought before that I have this because of some reasons. But not because I'm a poor person who's suffering because everybody is so bad. No. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, you need lots of energy and lots of um, power inside to go into this. Because uh, when you live in illusion, you never have freedom. But when you bre break illusion, mm -hmm. it's really painful. Can be. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Then you have to look at your dark sides. <laughs> yeah, and you mm -hmm. have to look at your dark side, and to accept. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think that's a really good one. And also, you said uh, in your story that uh, you feel ashamed a lot. And I also recently found out that feeling ashamed is the lowest frequency you can have in life. The idea is that uh, when you go through this situation, this hard situation to be ashamed, uh, um, then, then somehow I started to, to trust myself. Because before I tried to prove 
people who were shaming me that they are not right, that I'm okay, that I'm a normal person, that I didn't want to do somebody bad or something like this. But then I understood this, that I just waste my time. Mm. I don't need to put energy in this at all, mm. even if it, it's my family. I mean, my mm. parents, my grandparents or something. Everything I can do is to continue to do my way. And if they want to join me one day, I will be really happy. Mm. And uh, what I did, I just came to them for a short period. I talked nicely. I gave my life and went back to my life. Mm. And slowly, 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 they accepted, you know. But the idea is that never, never put energy in this. Just, mm -hmm. just, just continue. And you mm. know, uh, I remember one really good story about truth. Do you know this is a, a legend from the past about truth and lie? No, no. Like uh, one day, no, one day, uh, truth and lie met together. And it was special day when lie also tells truth. <laughs> mm. And lie told to truth, uh, look, it's such a nice weather today, so good day. Let's spend it together. Let's have a walk. Mm. And truth thought, hmm, okay, uh, the weather is really nice. Maybe we can walk a little bit. It will, it will not be so cruel yet. Yeah? They were walking the whole day, had nice time, talking, drinking coffee, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then uh, Truth relaxed, and then Lai told, Look, what a nice uh, lake. Mm -hmm. uh, what a nice water. Let's swim there together. It will be so good to swim and to have fun. It's so hot. Mm -hmm. And the Truth thought, Yes, it's really true. The water is so nice. It's so good idea to swim. And they take off their clothes and went to swim a little bit. But suddenly, Lai went out of the uh, lake, took uh, the clothes of the truth, take it on and run away. Mm. And the truth was really angry. And she went out of the lake with angry face, naked, and she was running after the lie because she wants to back mm -hmm. the clothes. And the idea that since that time, lies were the truth clothes and everybody thinks that truth is lie. Mm -hmm. And uh, the idea that nobody likes angry and naked truth. Yeah, true. It reminds me a lot of the sea times. Mm -hmm. um, I, ca I cannot really say the word because I don't want to get cancelled. But um, how was that period for you? Because you went from a really activist background and then you're back in the situation where you have to fight for your freedom. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, in Ukraine, laws were not so tough at that very moment. Mm. Uh, we had uh, some rules. Uh, we couldn't uh, use transport, for example, and we uh, should stay at home. But we also could go out to the shop or we could uh, go out for, for a walk into the park. And uh, uh, lots of um, lots of things were like, okay, okay, we didn't have... Uh, uh, restaurants open, for example, but we can have uh, some uh, dinner outside. Mm -hmm. So it was not like so tough. And we had no this. I, I actually, I didn't have this feeling that I need to fight for my freedom because it was like more or less okay. Uh, the uh, economical situation was not really good and I lost my job in that time. Yes, and mm -hmm. I should to find uh, another job, but it was not so easy. But as for this, uh, rules. It was nice. And actually, we had no strict rules about vaccination as well. Mm. Like, if you want, you can do. If you don't want, you don't need to do. Oh, okay. It was, oh. like, easy, yeah. That's very really nice. Well, in the Netherlands, yeah. it was really strict. And oh. also in Spain. I don't know if you heard yeah. it. Yeah. I heard it is terrible. 
Yeah. I would fight actually because I don't know what about <laughs> uh, Switzerland, but in Spain it was terrible. Yeah. Yeah, I was actually going to demonstrations and I was running for the police. So yeah, it was a really crazy time for me. It's good. It's really, really important to fight for our freedom. Because mm -hmm. when we don't do this in this life, then the next life, we will never have opportunity to be free. Mm -hmm. Because we lost this opportunity now. Yeah. So you are super lucky because when you try now, then in the future, you will be really free. <laughs> <laughs> so in my next life, I will be an even more freedom fighter. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, no. In, in the next uh, life, you will have more freedom than, than now. Oh, in that kind of way. Because you oh, deserve okay. it. You yeah. deserve it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's really important, but I also realized you cannot win from the government. So I also accepted that and that focusing on yourself is maybe more important and focusing on the positive. Uh, of course, it's mm -hmm. important that you're telling the truth to people. But yeah, the last year or last one and a half years... I was um, not really into this, this kind of stuff anymore because I thought like... I'm not going to spend all my life fighting, you know? Yes, you are right. Mm -hmm. You are really wise. Mm -hmm. This is a really cool decision. Yeah. Because uh, uh, we have... Uh, it's impermanence, yeah? Mm -hmm. We have countries which uh, uh, appears and disappears. Yeah, We have rules which appears and disappear. We mm -hmm. have all time changing. And it's so a little bit stupid to put all your life in such uh, impermanent things mm. <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. but it's really cool that you try mm -hmm. it's already yeah. win <laughs> yeah. yeah but i was such a pleaser before so i didn't really recognize myself but i felt so deep down that i have to do something about it so it was really hard for me to speak my truth also to people actually because everybody was so mm -hmm. mad at me i lost friends i lost family members mm -hmm. so yeah Oh, you have also a story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I need to I'm... make a podcast for you. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you have to interview me one day. But um, yeah. yeah, so for me now, I'm really happy where I am now because um, I think uh, being true to yourself is more important. And um, I got now people around me who really support me in everything. So I'm really happy about that. And um, I talk about this a lot in the podcast, but it was always my dream to live at the beach, for example. So <laughs> this kind of things was, um, yeah, it was really amazing that it actually happened. And also I want to get my driver's license. Um, I wanted to work on remotes and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, and I never thought I will ever start a podcast, but yeah, it just happened, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And do you do you see when you just trust yourself yourself and do from this trust yeah, things which are really right for you mm -hmm. then even if you don't catch the goal which you wanted before still everything around start change and then you mm -hmm. will see you are in the other situation. Yeah. And maybe this situation is better than before. Yeah. Yeah, and True. it's so nice to 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 feel it. Yeah, yeah for sure. Mm -hmm. And um, after COVID, you got into uh, the Ukraine war, and it was really hard for you. Um, and after that, you moved to Malaga. Mm -hmm. um, how was that period for you? Um. Okay, we were talking before that mm. I don't want really so much. No, not really, about but the war. yeah, yeah, of yeah. course, yeah. The only one thing which I want to say, which is very important, that when you feel, when when somebody feels that it can be some critical situation in the country, in the city, because now I see that situation in the world is not so stable. Yeah, so when you just feel or know some uh, news about this. It's very important to have a plan mm -hmm. because when we had some news about uh, uh, about this war, like uh, some media told that maybe Russia could attack Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Of course, lots of people didn't want to believe in this. 
because we are neighbors and like okay how it can be we have relatives in uh, russia and in russia many people have relatives in ukraine and france how it can be nobody wanted to believe in this mm-hmm. but uh, i prepared yeah we had a plan uh, i uh, i asked my uh, ex-husband uh what uh, what was his plan and we decided to if only something started to take a car and uh, take things and take my son and go out of the country mm. in any way which is possible because my idea was i don't want that my son listen to these bombs mm-hmm. i don't want to hurt his to tr- to hurt his uh, mind yeah this yeah of terrible. course yeah and of course i wanted to protect him mm-hmm. and when everything started and we heard uh, we heard these bombs yeah uh it was so scared that you don't have any energy for any decision making mm-hmm. everything that i could do is just slowly slowly took my things which I planned before because I planned if I didn't plan I even didn't and automatically uh called to my relatives what are you doing where are I it was like all automatically yeah and then I remember like uh, last 15 minutes in the in my apartment when I was sitting and I couldn't move mm-hmm. at all because I knew that I will maybe I will never come back yeah wow. or if I come back it will be not so soon it's it's terrible yeah but mm. but it's very imp- important and i'm really like uh, thanks to myself that i decided it in advance mm-hmm. yeah because it moved very quickly and lots of my friends they lost their lives or they were in a really bad situation in some underground uh, uh, in a very hard condition and some of my uh, classmates are still we don't know where they are mm. they disappear it's like terrible things you know yeah it's, so it's yeah i'm happy that we don't have this and i'm here but still we have this ptsr do you know this post-traumatic yeah. syndrome yeah yeah yes uh because uh, it's it's body it reacts yeah. like this yeah, yeah true yeah and i felt so stupid in that time because it's like after covid i don't know mm. who uh, had this uh disease when you have covid because mm-hmm. i had covid mm-hmm. and then your ne- neurotic system a little bit stupid you, you can uh, decide to go to to take a water but then you stand uh, like uh, in the middle of your room and can't understand why i take this cup in my hand <laughs> what i want to do because nervous system a little bit doesn't work yeah mm-hmm. and it was the same with us yeah because we were like uh, yesterday we were in in my um, in our houses. We had job. We had normal life. I would never move to Malaga actually because I liked mm-hmm. my life in Ukraine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I I would like to go to vacation in Spain. It's a very very nice country, but I, I would like to to live in my country. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But now you are in the middle of uh, of mountains, mm-hmm. uh, thirty six degrees. <laughs> and you don't know what to do with your life <laughs> yeah wow yeah like... and how did you came across uh spiritual entrepreneurs oh it was it was a story for me because i was living in uh, mountains not in malaga uh, and it was quite uh, tough because uh, like the first uh, the closest shop was like uh, five kilometers from from my house and uh, the school as well and i had no car Mm. and uh, i had not so much money actually as well because it's difficult to find some money in mountains yeah to Mm -hmm. earn some money yeah and i understood that i need to do something and i found uh, the spiritual entrepreneurs uh, because my friend was attending them as well and Mm. she told me Tanya, you should go there. You will have this business uh, f- past. You need to develop this. Mm. But I was like uh, uh, a farmer style woman, uh, all <laughs> in dust. And I thought, oh my God, where I am now and where is this business? <laughs> yeah, you have to think in corporate again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and 
and then I, I came to my friend. She's also from Ukraine. And I told Lera, let's go together. She, mm -hmm. she's, she, first she agreed, but then no, 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 no. I can't. It's too, it's too far away. And then I was sitting in my house. It was uh, the day before this uh, first uh, rooftop party. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, but if I don't try, uh, what should I do next? At least try. Maybe you meet some people. Or maybe you do something interesting. Maybe you just uh, get some inspiration and then you can change the situation. And they tried. It was so funny. I, I, I found my friend uh, and uh, said, please come with me because he had a car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then I uh, took high heels and made a makeup. <laughs> it was so <laughs> enormous in this mountain area and i was walking in these high hills and uh, uh, an old dog was walking uh, near me uh, he was so miserable <laughs> and i felt the same <laughs> that i'm so miserable oh my god where i go i'm just this farmer lady and this is malaga big country and so on yeah i'm now i'm joking about this of course mm -hmm. but that it was funny and then I met uh, many people, very nice people in this um, party, rooftop party. And then um, we were talking a lot uh, and I just remembered that I also from business stuff and I, I knew lots of good things. And uh, Spain is not so different from Ukraine, actually. Mm -hmm. We have the same rules, we have the same uh, companies, uh, the same Oh, oh, everything is the same. It's not so tough, mm -hmm. yeah? Yeah. And then uh, Andreas told that he needed help. Mm -hmm. And I decided, okay, I can come and say because I have time. Why not? Mm -hmm. And uh, I came up to him and uh, told uh, what I can to do. And uh, in some weeks, we just had a call. And then slowly, slowly, we start working together. Yes, Amazing. I really, send, I really send, uh, thanks to Andrea that he believed in me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that uh, that I can do so good things. Yeah. Because uh, um, if you uh, if you can organize uh, and do something good for good people, this is really inspirable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And I think it's very important to work for such community because yeah. spiritual people they are really sensitive yeah mm -hmm. and sometimes they can feel a little bit lonely yeah with yeah. their ideas yeah. Yeah, yeah because most of the people uh, are they are not thinking about such things yeah they are, mm -hmm. don't want to go deeper as you say yeah? mm -hmm. and it's very important that spiritual people can meet together yeah they can share yeah what they feel what they think and they can grow in businesses and so on yeah sometimes uh, we don't have so good situation in business not because we are bad uh, entrepreneurs but sometimes we don't have inspiration enough yeah, yeah. or don't have support uh, don't have friends on the way mm -hmm. this is very important yeah, but I I also find it hard to connect with spiritual people here in Malaga. Mm -hmm. And um, I was so happy with this community. Mm. And um, that's why I also offered you to, uh, to help you with the Instagram of spiritual entrepreneurs. Because I thought this is so important for so many people. And I just want to be a part of that. So, um, yeah. Joy, you are doing this really cool. I'm yeah. really... Send, thanking you like every day when you send <laughs> something, and it's oh my god, she did it so good! Really, so thank nice. you. <laughs> thank you that she, that she did it. <laughs> really, it's really cool. Thank you very much. Yeah. Mm. yeah i really love to do it so for me it's easy yeah mm -hmm. when when you do something from your heart it's always easy to do it right yes yeah. it's true <laughs> it's true and people mm. also feel it yeah yeah, yeah true yeah especially in this uh, creative uh, professions yeah mm -hmm. it's really yeah. felt yeah. when you do this honestly and from your heart or when you do this from your brains yeah this is mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. nice i think this is a perfect ending for the podcast mm -hmm. and uh, but uh, where can people find you can uh, people reach out to you on instagram or facebook 
both Instagram mm. and Facebook. I can uh, share my links if, if you wish. Yeah, and of course. Yeah, I put uh, for connections. This is yeah, cool. yeah. So if every anybody wants to uh, connect with Tanya, uh, you can uh, click the link below. I will put all the links in the description. And uh, I always ask the guests, uh, do you have some nice words to share with the audience? Mm, yes, I have. The highest truth is the highest joy and the highest way of functioning. Wow. This is my Lama, Ole Nidal, words. And these words inspire me a lot. And I have them, them in my heart all the time. Mm, amazing. Well, thank you so much for coming on my podcast. And thanks for sharing your story. And uh, I will see everybody in the next episode. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.